I am going to help you pick out the right charger for your home and for your electric car, whatever it might be. So we're going to start right now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars today. Now, I hate to tell you this, but there is no such thing as the best electric car charger, just like there is no such thing as the best electric car or the best sushi restaurant. It's different for everybody. So instead of doing a top five common denominator best chargers for an average consumer list, we're going to talk about best chargers in different categories. The best home chargers on a budget, the best smart home chargers, the best Tesla chargers, and a few other categories that I'm sure you will be able to relate to. But I'm not doing it alone. I got the best guy in the business to help us out. You know him as our weekly contributor. He also contributes to Forbes and Inside EVs. But most importantly, he is the host of his own YouTube channel dedicated to home and fast charging. Of course, I'm talking about Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, I would not dare make this video without you because by far you are the best expert in the industry. <laughs> if, if anything, your backdrop definitely showcases that. So let's jump right in. Uh, and, you know, before we get to the categories, uh, let's talk about a, a couple of things that people ask all the time. One, you know, people call these chargers, by the way, and I know you corrected me and you said these are charging stations. What is the difference? So, yeah, I, I know everybody calls them chargers, but the technical term is actually EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment. That's because the charger is built into every electric car. Every electric car has what's called an onboard charger. That's the device that actually charges the car. These EVSE or charging stations just supply energy to the vehicle safely. They're really just glorified safety devices, Alex. All right, and that brings me to another question, uh, which is, you know, we decided not to have a category of the fastest charger because everybody wants to charge their cars as fast as possible. Why can't we talk about what, which, which charger is the fastest? So you asked me about that. Let's do the fastest charging station. And the reason why I kind of said I don't think that's a good way to go was because the car always dictates how fast it charges on AC level two charging. Uh, so... You know, there is plenty of charging stations that can deliver up to 48 amps, which is really the maximum that any EV can accept today. So it's not really fair to, 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 to pick one of those because there's a bunch of them available on the market that can deliver up to 48 amps. All right. And that brings me to the, another question that I asked pretty often, I'm, I'm sure you as well, is, well, why can't, I mean, my car can charge at the supercharger or Electrify America very, very fast. So why can't I do it at home? Okay, because there's two different types of charging. There's AC, which is alternating current, and DC, direct current charging. At home, level one charging is a regular household outlet. That's 120 volts. Level two charging is 240 volts, which is behind me. Now, energy is stored in a battery as uh, direct current, DC. So when you charge a car from AC, either level one or level two, it has to be converted to DC. That's basically what the onboard charger does. So imagine the electricity coming from these units has to go through the onboard charger. It converts it to DC, direct current, and stores it in the battery. So that's why the onboard charger is the bottleneck. It restricts how fast the car can charge. When you charge DC fast charging or supercharging, you, you take energy directly from that charging station and it goes right into the battery. It doesn't have to go through the onboard charger, so it's not restricted. So that way the battery can accept a lot more energy and charge a lot faster. All right, so now I feel like we're ready to jump into the categories. And the first category is the best smart home charging station. Yeah, so you know, at, I'd like to point out first that these are my opinions. There's, there's a few really good ones on the market. So I'm going to tell you which one's my favorite and then mention a couple other ones that are really close that I think are great deals also. My, my favorite smart charger is the NLX juice box. Uh, it has more smart charging features than, than any other smart charger. We talk about smart chargers are chargers that are like Wi-Fi enabled. They come with an app. You can uh, view your past charging sessions. Sometimes you can adjust the current. You could schedule it to charge from your app. 
You can see you know, how long the car's been charging, how much energy it took in. Many of them you can even uh, pair with Amazon Alexa or Google Home and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, Alexa, charge my car, and the car starts charging. Uh, you could say, hey, uh, you know, Alexa, uh, how long has my car been charging? And it'll tell you. So it has a lot of smart charging features, but the juice box also allows you to pair your charger with your local utility and through a service called JuiceNet Green, charge your car when the most uh, cleanest energy is available during the day. So that's important for a lot of EV drivers. They want to be clean. They want their car to be zero emissions. The juice box is one of the only uh, chargers that allows you to actually select when you charge your car based on how clean the grid is. Honorable mentions go to the Wallbox Pulsar Plus and also the ChargePoint Home Flex. They're also two very good smart chargers. All right, now before we go to the next category, uh, of course, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you very uh, appropriate sponsors for this video. The first one is Flow. The Home X5 is a great and durable home charger that allows you to schedule, monitor, and optimize your charging via a mobile app with 24 seven customer support. Get one using our exclusive $150 discount in the description of this video and buy new charge. Guess what? The 220 outlet that powers your dryer can now be split also to power your electric car with the help of the new charger smart splitter, which will automatically switch back to your dryer while you're doing your laundry. Get $50 off using the discount code in the description of this video all right let's move on to the next category which is the best value okay that one should be pretty quick the grizzle e here 40 amp grizzle e classic i think it's the best value for a charger it's a dumb charger it's not a smart charger so it doesn't pair with a wi with wi-fi you can't select an app um, that version is coming out, but for now, the classic is just the way it is. It's a 40 amp charger. It's built really tough. Uh, it has adjustable power, so you can set it to deliver the power that you want based on what your circuit can supply. And uh, up until very recently, it only cost $399. Now, it recently jumped up to $459. I don't know if that's a permanent price increase. Uh, I think it could be temporary because of the shortage with uh, you know semiconductor chips and so forth. But even at 459, it's a great value, and that's my best value choice. And now we come to the category that uh, obviously dictates itself within the entire electric car community. We're going to talk about specific chargers for Tesla drivers. It is its own category. Yeah, and you have to do this, Alex, because. There are so many Teslas sold. I mean, Teslas account for, uh, I forget what the exact percentage is, something like 75% of all EVs in, in the US. Uh, so, you know, we, we had to give them their own category. And it, the re another reason why is because they have their own connector. Tesla uses a different connector than all of the other uh, electric vehicles in North America. Uh, they use uh, their Tesla proprietary connector. Every other electric vehicle uses this, the J1772. So for Tesla owners, I think it's particularly important that they get, in my opinion, the best choice is the Tesla wall connector. It's at a good price. It's, it delivers up to 48 amps uh, and it has the Tesla connector standard. So you don't need an adapter. You could use one of the other charging stations to charge your Tesla uh, with the adapter that's provided by Tesla when you, when, you, when, uh, when you buy your Tesla, it comes with the car. So you could use any of these, but there's no need to, to use this for daily charging when Tesla has such a good solution, I think it's best off to just buy the Tesla wall connector. Now the adapter you just showed, that's so uh, the Tesla uh, a charger can uh, 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 charge a different car or that the non-Tesla charger can draw, uh, charge the Tesla car. So what comes free with your car is this adapter that allows you to charge your Tesla with, with another charging station. Let's say you already had one at your house, you, you didn't want to buy another one, Tesla gives you this for free, good on them. 
Yeah. Um, but let's say you already own a Tesla, so you have a Tesla wall connector in your garage, and now you buy a Mustang Mach-E or ID4 or any other electric vehicle. You say, geez, I gotta go out and get another charging station, you know, because it has a different connector. You don't have to. You can buy one of these adapters. It's a Tesla to J1772 adapter. Um, this is a nice uh, Tesla Tap Mini, one of my favorite ones, and this one's just a Tesla Tap. Uh, but the one thing I need to point out, this is super important. There's a lot of very cheap uh, units of these available today, like on Amazon, that are not made well, they burn out. Um, make sure you get a good quality made one. Don't go buying the cheapest one that's available. It's gonna melt the connectors, the pins are gonna burn out. Get one that matches the amperage of your car. If you have a, a car that can accept 40 amps, make sure you get one that can deliver at least 50 amps oversize it a little bit because I've seen so many nightmare stories of people melting cheap connectors and then damaging their car. All right, so our next category is portable charging stations. What would you call them and what are they? So I just call them uh, either EVSE or portable charging equipment. And what that is are the smaller units like this amazing E that we have here that you would carry around with you in your car. A lot of people like to have charging equipment in the back of their EV in case they need to plug in on the road. Some EVs come with a nice uh, portable EVSE, a level two unit that can tr charge the car relatively quickly, but some cars come with very weak charging equipment is standard. A level one unit that trickle charges, you only get about three or four miles of range per hour. And those owners prefer to go out and buy a nice level two charging unit. My favorite are the two from uh, Amazing E. The Amazing E 16 amp portable charging unit and also the Amazing E Fast, which is a 32 amp unit. Um, why do I like Amazing E? The, the, they're super quality. That's what I really like about Amazing E, more so than uh, some of the other portable charging equipment. You can find them on Amazon. There's dozens of them, many from companies you've never heard of, a lot of them being imported from Asia with like 30 day or 60 day warranties. Uh, they're not safety certified. They're really not safe to use. These units here cost a little more, I'll be right up front with you, but they're solid units with really good warranties and they're safe. You, you know, you just spent 30, 40, $50,000 on this brand new EV, and now you're trying to save $50 on the charging equipment. It really doesn't make sense. Buy a nice quality unit and it will last you a long time and you won't have any problems with connectors melting or plugs burning out. Get a good solid unit and you won't regret that decision. All right, now the, the next category is outdoor charging stations because I think it's easy to assume when we talk, talk about home charging, it's always inside the garage, but a lot of people either don't use their garage or don't have a garage. So this is something that is kind of a whole different animal that has to weather, literally weather the storm. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of different aspects in charging equipment. And if you're gonna buy one to mount it outside, there's a few more things that you need to look at. Uh, how well the, the cable is. If you live in a cold weather area, how does that hold up in really frigid cold weathers? Does it remain nice and bendable and pliable or does it get like a frozen rope and you can't even bend it? The, the unit also, you need to know what the NEMA waterproof rating is. Some of these units, or have better uh, NEMA ratings. If you're gonna mount your unit outside, you live in an area where it frequently rains or snows, you should look for a NEMA four rated unit. Um, the units that I think that are the best for outdoor are, are Clipper Creek products. Clipper Creek makes absolutely fantastic products. The most, some of the most durable products, they've been around forever, Cl Clipper Creek. They're like the OG of EV charging stations. Uh, and their units are some of the most robust units available. Honorable mention goes to the Grizzle E. Uh, that's also a super tough unit. This thing can withstand just about anything. And also the Flow uh, G5 or X5. Uh, both of these units are made really well. They're, they're metal encasing, uh, enclosure, super tough. And uh, these three units here, in my opinion, are the best if you're gonna mount them outside and use a, an outdoor charging solution. All right, Tom, and I guess that's it. These are all the categories and all the chargers. Uh, thanks so much once again, and uh, I will see you back on our regularly show 
for the Sunday electric car news. Very good. Thanks for having me, Alex. If you want to see the most detailed reviews about every single home charger, home charging station that you have seen in this video, browse to Tom's channel. I put a link in the description of this video. Check them out. He does all kinds of things to them, including shoving them into the freezer. It's, it's a lot of fun. Don't forget to subscribe to his channel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This is a great time to hit that subscribe button. All right. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.